let's just do a quick do a quick double check right here all right so haven't made a video in a little while but I haven't made a, vid a video of this particular format in much longer the last time I made a map or not made a map the last time I made a video about any of my mapping projects was well over a year ago I'm pretty sure I checked the date and it was I believe it was like April something 2018 it is now June 2019 a lot has happened since then a lot in my life and with my mapping projects and you might be wondering just how many mapping projects can one start in the span of about a year and two months let's say 14 months well quite a lot and the map we're in right now which is the one that's gonna be the focus of this video I'm gonna go through the different versions of this one this is King of the Hill Ordinance, which is spelled wrong in the title, which I still need to fix. I don't know if I'll be coming back to this map, though, so just be that. But these first three versions of this map, they're called Orkoth Observatory, because that is what this map was originally about. Is that if we head through over to here, you can see that this is supposed to be like a telescope looking thing. This map was originally based around an abandoned observatory type building and it is not that anymore but that's what it originally was and this A1 right here was the original concept for the map and I believe I started it up actually not too long after I had made the most recent and by most recent I mean April 2018 mapping projects video. Just a little bit after that I had started making this. I think I came up with it in class. I was in like economics class or something and I just started doing a rough sketch of a Koth mid that I thought would be cool and it ended up developing into this building and then it ended up developing into these two buildings and then of course spawn over here but that's that part's not as important. The main important part of the map where the whole idea started was this building and the cliff. That is where the entire idea started. So you come out to here. Actually, let's just let's actually just go back to the spawn here. That might make a little more sense and heal up a bit. Come out the spawn in this first version anyways. You can either enter out you have, you can either exit out of the left or right doors or you can go down this drop down door that you wouldn't normally see in any map really. I mean at least there's a resupply cabinet down here so you don't have to jump up there. But this weird drop down corridor thing that leads into I believe this is a one way door? Yes. And then there's also this drop down here that goes into the one way door that goes back up to here. Very confusing. That did not stay in the map very long. But you come out to here and then you're you're basically given well, four options, technically. You can go left or right into this building, or you can drop down and go into the same building. Or you can head to the far left and go through the cave here. It's mirrored on the opposite side, so it would be, you know, the opposite directions if you were on blue. And then when you're in the building, well, when you're, at, okay, more simply, you come out of the tunnel and go kind of anywhere to this area. If you're in this building, you can either go out the left or right doors here, or you can head to the right into this tower where you can either head out this way or you can head up to the tower which takes you to the roof which also means since you can get up here you can actually you can jump over the roof as well that's another route so it's kinda like it's kinda like harvest or Swegen was part of the inspiration I didn't want to just do another viaduct formula kinda map uh, I just wanted to do a map that was more like you know Swegen harvest I guess bagel might be another good example of a map that's more like this, except in Bagel, it's more about there being a lobby between the two, like, yards of the map, the spawn yard and the yard right before the mid, or however, however it goes. In Bagel, you can't jump over the, uh, the roofs or whatever, but in Swegen and Harvest and this map, you can. Well, you could, but we'll, we'll bring that up later. So from all those options, 
you have just kind of this little yard area. It's got a bunch of rocks. Really not a whole lot to it other than that. There's also this rock. This becomes something interesting later. But then you have the option, the options of either ducking to the left and going to this room, or you could use the window to get to the top of the room if you're like a mobility class. You could head straight through the main entrance, or you could head around the building to the right, where you could then either duck into the mid from the left here, or, or just the side, let's just say the side, or keep going to the enemy side of the map. Uh, there, This is a death pit over here, and you actually can get over to this area, and only in the first few versions that is. I planned it on getting rid of it anyway. This is just a fun little thing for the, uh, the TF2 maps test. It's just this little area here. People would people would purposely jump over just to visit the spire but more importantly than that than the spire is this guy right here this guy should look familiar to you because in another version of the map that was never released this cactus right here with these cosmetics was located I believe it was like I believe it was what this cactus originally was. This cactus was originally that cactus over there. And it got moved over there just for shits and giggles. But this cactus, for those of you who might know me, well, I mean, if you're watching this video, you probably do, considering I have a pretty small audience. This is where my profile picture came from. And that is what it has been ever since. It was this map that started that over a year ago. And I guess the rest is history. But we still have to talk about the rest of this map because some very weird things about it. Oh yeah, there's still the mid. You have the side room here that ramps up to here, but you can also just go lower here. There's this platform off to the side that takes you up to the telescope. The mid was here. Yeah, mid is here. Got some barricades. And then you have this large upper balcony kind of thing that just wraps around the whole mid and the windows here to lead to this roof. And the idea was, I wanted there to be a mid. First of all, I don't, I didn't, I don't see indoor cough mids very often. I think it's just because they're kind of difficult to pull off. Oh, there's this funny detail, because I didn't have a, a blue version of this. I just put a B over the sign. But, as I was saying, I don't normally see cough mids pulled off indoor cough mids pulled off too well just because normally they're pretty cramped so what I wanted to do was have a very large building to house the mid and I also wanted it to be that it was very offense favoring where that there's a lot of height advantage a lot of advantage over the point here but not to the point of the of the control point being very easily just spammed out like harvest's mid is for instance or sweet well actually yeah harvest and Sweden have those problems. I was like, I want to take inspiration from those maps, but I want to fix their problems. So that's kind of where this building came from. So offense could could very easily take the high ground and use it to recapture the point. And from what I found from this map, in particular, more than pretty much... Oh, someone's trying to invite me to a party. I'm going to... Hold on a second. Okay, let me just double check that it's still recording. Yes, and it paused successfully. Awesome. And the game is going to take 500 years to let me back into the game. But while it's doing that... Oh, there we go. We're back in. So, I was about to say, more so than any other map, this map became a really... It actually played rather nicely, even in the first iteration of the map. At least in a casual setting, like TF2 maps. Because, you know, TF2 maps tests aren't really... Competitive tests are more geared towards casual play, to some degree. But, yeah, it actually played out pretty well, even in just the first version. It was very back and forth. It played kind of how I wanted it to, and people liked it. And it was very motivating for me. It's part of this map, in particular, is kind of why I have, like, ten, maybe even, like, 12 or so more projects that came after this. A few of them not even on TF2 maps, but there's a lot going on right now. In fact, I have one in the works right now. Another brand new one that's just in the works right now. 
But that one is not until way later, and it's not even really finished yet, so it's not really worth making a video on. But back to this one. Yeah. So this map was very motivating for me to continue mapping for TF2 because people seem to really like it, and it also motiv me, motivated me, of course, to continue working on it around when I was making it. I'm not really not really too sure about continuing it anymore. Maybe, considering how far it actually managed to get, but uh, I guess I'll talk about it a little bit more as we go into the later version. So let's actually, I don't really know what else to talk about about this version. It's kind of, it's a pretty straightforward map. It kind of is just like, I don't know, I just wanted it to be like Harvester Sweden, but better particularly with the mid-building. And it just came kind of out of nowhere and people seem to like it. So let's go to version 2, A2. Eat my dust! dust. Alright, so this is A2. As you can see, this drop-down is still here. But, let's see, let's actually, let me actually see what even changed in this version. Okay, so the Easter egg is still over there. Just trying to get my re frame of reference here. Uh... Let me check inside the house here if anything changed. Okay. I changed... Looks like I changed this door to be more apparent that it's a one-way. I put a sign there. Uh, did anything change up here? No. This didn't really change. Uh, I guess one thing... There's this random just kind of tower block thing here. I'm pretty sure that's specifically to block sight lines, because otherwise... Uh, you would be able to shoot from the corner of this building to the corner of the opposite building. That's that's pretty nutty, not gonna lie. But I think the main addition to, in this version was this door right here. There's this rock here, and then of course there's the upper floor of this building here. But, oh yeah, I guess I opened up the window there. But there's this door now. So if you climb up the rocks, you can get up this door. And this developed a little bit. This would develop into something a little more later, but for now, it's just, you know, it's just a prop climb. It doesn't look like a whole lot else is different. I think this was the main addition, was just this upper route. So not that much to talk about, actually. One thing, actually, I guess one thing I could talk about was I was actually rather surprised with how alright this particular part of the map played out. The f you have the big death pit, of course. That's pretty iffy for a Koth map. But it actually ended up seeming to work out pretty nice, because actually the point, just with the way the point is set up, it's pretty far away from the death pit. It's just kind of like a nice little thing off to the side. And then there's also, you know, these very risky full packs off to the side that people were able to play around and people like the dynamic of the really, really risky packs that you could get at the cost of potentially getting, you know, knocked off the cliff and killed. And then, of course, there's the Easter egg still over there. Uh, I don't think there's a whole lot else in this one, so let me just jump straight to A3. Okay, so we are now in A3, I believe. Let's see what changed here. Okay, so it looks like I started a little bit of detailing work here. You have these, like... Oh, there's a hidden... <laughs> I hid burgers around the map in this version for some reason. Or at least I tried to, but I don't think all of them showed up. Let me see if there were one. I swear I hid one, like, up here or something. But, whatever. Yeah, there's just a hidden burger inside of the minecart over here. I kind of developed this a little further, detailed it a little further. This looks a little different. I don't remember this rock pile being here before the one that this one that lets you climb up to the roof i don't know looks like cover and stuff on the rocks got rearranged but here's another here's here's what i was talking about earlier about this being developed it's not just a rock climb it's just straight up you go up the ramp now now you're here did anything ah oh, yes and there's also this you have this wind these windows here you have these windows that would let you be up here and look down on whichever side of the map. If you went to the enemy's side, you could look down the enemy's side, but at the cost of being very far forward. There's also these little cover walls up here, and I guess it extended the balcony a little bit. Um, what else changed? 
It's been a while since I've ran through these old ass versions of the map. Oh. There's also some stuff here, it looks like. I didn't actually I I haven't actually looked at blue side very often. I think they're yeah, the original idea was like blue side was some you know, some typical I guess it's just like it's the typical red red and blue building dynamics where red has like mines and brick structures and wooden things and shit and blue is all about concrete and steel and you know these kinds of things but that's just this very minor detailing stuff uh i guess there might have been some other minor things i don't remember if these spools were always here to prevent you from taking as much fall damage from dropping down from the roof or whatever else i did again been a while but Things are about to change quite a b Oh, there's another Borger on the spire right there. I think things are going to change pretty drastically in the next version, because that is when the name changes from Observatory to Ordnance, and, well, you'll just, you'll, you'll see some things happen. So let's see them, let's see them happen. Let's waste them. All right, so, we are now on Koth... Ordnance A4, not Observatory A4. This is Ordnance. It's the same map, just a different name. The drop-down exit is just gone entirely. I believe I originally left it in this way as a test to see if I really needed it. And as it turned out, didn't really need it. So I just never re-added it. Even this is blocked off the way it is. Um, let's see if anything actually changed with these houses. Doesn't look like it cover seems to be about the same, this seems to be the same, but the big, the real big change, besides the changing the map name and whatnot, all these windows are different, it says, yeah, it's no longer in some old abandoned observatory, rather, it is a missile silo, it contains a missile, this, I, I think I originally planned for this to be a custom model whenever the map got completely finished. Uh, you have the missile here. You have a hole here that you can fall through and just die. And there's just a frog at the bottom because, you know, why not? It's a death pit anyway. I'd get to detailing it when it gets to detailing. And then there's also this vent that goes from here and wraps to behind the point here. I think the one, the one other thing I forgot to mention when I was discussing, like, the design of like why I wanted to design the building the way it is is also the other reason a lot well one of the big reasons a lot of indoor mids don't work is because there's very few entrances into the mids like Sweden for instance you have the three entrances on the ground one on each side one on each team side and then one in the middle and then you have I think it's like two entrances from the top that are team sided maybe three through the windows lets you get to this little top part of it. And Harvest only has three entrances into the mid. There's the two on each side of the little building, and then there's the hole on top of the building. And it's a very cramped little, just shitty little shack thing. Interestingly enough, both of those maps were originally arena maps, so that, you know, that kind of contributes to how they would have those kinds of problems. But if you notice, there are a ton of entrances into this building, and I guess that's just a natural product also of it just being a big building that takes up a majority of the middle area of the map, but I still thought it's important to note just how many ways there are into the building. You have, I believe it's, if I had to count them right now, it's one, two, three, four, four on, four, on each team side and then you have this one in the middle and then you also technically have this one in the middle the vent now that was added in this version for a total of 10 that's 10 different ways in here plus these windows will let you shoot out of them and into them and I guess these windows too but those technically go into the side room not the actual mid building but yeah, a lot, having a lot of entrances into the building also makes it very difficult in my opinion what I wanted it to have happen was that it was difficult to really defend the actual building that much and becomes more just about the back and forth of trying to take over the building and it never really be 
one team just holds it for the entire round. I think at one point in the map's development, it did end up slanting towards people defending the point, just were able to hold it for a lot, but I don't know really where it was, but for the most for the most part, the way the map would play out is very, very back and forth, and I was very pleased with it. It was pretty much like that. It's pretty much been like that for its entire lifespan, to my to my recollection. Uh, I can't really think of what else to talk about with this particular version, so let's just go to the next one. Okay, are we unpaused? We are, in fact, unpaused. But this is the part of the map <laughs> the map's development that is typical for me, where I gave up on using dev textures and just went and textured everything to have no dev textures, because I was sick, sick at looking at the dev textures. Uh, let's see here. So we got this. I have fully embraced not having this drop down on a spawn that leads into the mid building. They're just kind of a relic of it over here. It would be like one of those. Uh, oh, forgot to do MP waiting for players cancel. One. Got to do that. But, doesn't matter. Eat my dust. Eat my dust. Fully embrace that being gone. There's the relic over here. It's like a storm bunker entrance thing. It would have doors there if it was fully finished. But, there's the mine tunnel there. You got the cliffs still. I think they, yeah, they still look like that. Uh, Five, four, three, two, one. Thank you, announcer. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, announcer. Anyway, uh, I guess the building is textured. This is textured. Now the map in general is textured. The mid building is textured. What else may have been textured? What else? Well, actually, what's more important is what else has changed. I think it was this version. I, I somehow I completely forgot if I actually had the shack here in the version I was literally just doing before this one. But this is a pretty major addition. Instead of having just a bunch of rocks. This terrain is pretty flat in these versions. But besides having a bunch of rocks to break up cover, now we have the shack, which also, there's a whole bunch of like skill jumps you can do around these rocks, especially starting with this version. But in particular, I believe, and I think I made this one in particular easier, is that you can jump from the fence on the shack into the window here. And at some point, it just I think it just straight up became an all-class skill jump. Uh, let's see what else might have changed. Uh, that's unusual. What the fuck? Why are there two small ammos there? I don't remember doing that. I think it's... Actually, actually, you know what? I think that was intentional, actually. It was like a temporary thing, and then I just ended up making it a medium pack or something. But the vent is still like this. These stairs are still the way they are. Uh, oh, one thing I forgot to mention, turn the HUD on for a second so I can see this. Capturing the point, the point actually captures uh, at a fairly moderate speed. I don't remember at what point I actually start changing the speed of the cap, but when you do cap the point, the door opens. And presumably when the round would win, the missile would... I think the original plan was that when the round would win, the missile would just launch out of the hole, and then blow up. User joined your channel. User joined my channel. It would blow up some structure on whatever side of the map is opposite the team that won the point. Because I guess you you capture the point, you capture the rocket, and you get to send it to the enemy base to fucking blow it up. That just makes that just makes sense. Uh, but yeah, that was the big thing with this update. It looks like it's the shack here and textures and stuff. As you can tell, it does take, like, especially with this map, I wasn't doing very extremely radical changes very often. This one, the layout stayed pretty much consistent throughout its entire lifespan. It was just more minor changes, and then you can only really see the true radical difference between the A1 and what its current version is just by, by comparing those two. That's when you see the real radical... Actually, that's not necessarily true. We'll, we'll see why that is in a moment. But let's go to the... Let me turn off my HUD here again. Let's go to the next version. 
All right, we're now in. We are now in A6. It looks like I added windows to the spawns. You could see what was going on outside of the spawn before you left, so you wouldn't. So you, I guess, don't get spawn camped as hard. On this side, it looks like it's just wood with chicken wire, and I think on the other side, it's just glass with metal. Uh, yeah, this that thing is still like that. What else happened here? This is still the same. There's still the ooh, hello there. This is the first iteration of me adding this central building here to prevent people from flying across the entire map to the opposite side of the map. Why I didn't think to do that earlier in the map's development, I don't know, but it's here in this version. And originally, in an unreleased version of the map, one that was never, that never came to be, that I ended up scrapping, was that I had a whole separate playable area here, like Sweden. There's a separate building, it had a whole set of like just like land things. I don't remember exactly what it was. It was just a it was a large building here and it had like a weird bridge thing and it covered up other things and it was just it was super bulky and completely unnecessary. And eventually it just I just made this this was this ended up being a lot better. Uh, I guess as a consequence of that, I think these, I don't remember when these trims, I think these trims appeared in this version, these metal trims, and I guess just as a consequence of there being this kind of sky bridge thing here, going into this building, I added a little, little balcony here, with a door. It's a very tiny sky bridge. I can't imagine this being anything more than, like, a vent or something, but, yeah. Oh, and this is a medium pack again. Not a whole lot else to say about this one. So I guess we'll go... Oh, ammo pack there. There's a lot of packs here. We'll see that change somewhat soon. Let's just go to the next version. Alright, and this is when the actual landscape... Oh, this is when the actual landscape of the map got a makeover. It is now a kind of gravel pit upward kind of theme instead of a Badlands theme. Originally, I had a completely different set of rock textures for this in an unreleased... Actually, no, it was a released version, but it didn't work. The textures were just straight up fucking missing, and I could never figure out how to add them. Oh. There we go. Whatever. Can I move, please? Thank you. Let's waste them. Uh, oh, there's this rock here to block sight lines across the spawn yard, I guess. But yeah. You notice some, you see some detailing things start to take shape. Uh, this is new. There's just this really awkward thing here. Got some dis- God damn, announcer. Got some displacement work going on. We got some hills. You know, there's actually some bumps, some rough edges. This building is a little more fleshed out. It's a bit bigger. The sky bridge actually has like windows and stuff and is actually kind of feasible. This thing, instead of having two symmetrical ladders, they're just weird. It just has one, and then this is boarded up by planks. Uh, so I added these, like, computer things here, and you can climb on top of them using this hand cart. That, for the longest time, I didn't know what the name of the prop was, because it was just really bizarre. Um, that seems to be it for this version as well. As you As you can see, there's not really a whole lot to talk about with some of these versions. It's just like detailing stuff. You can just, you can see it. There's also this fridge here. This is a reference, I believe what I was originally tried to do was put a washing machine there. An HL2 washing machine. I couldn't find a TF2 version, so I just used a regular version. <laughs> a regular version? Tried to use, tr couldn't find a TF2 version, tried to use a, a Half-Life version, didn't work, so I just used a fridge and added my own collisions to it because this fridge model, for some reason, does not have any collisions by default. This is a reference to Unturned. There's an easter egg in most Unturned maps. Unturned is a zombie survival game. And uh, I don't know why I, I put it in that part of the paragraph, but <laughs> I say paragraphs as if I'm using a script. I, I'm clearly not, but yeah, there would be hidden washing machines that are just cratered into the ground across a bunch of official unturned maps. So I just I threw a wa I threw a fridge. I almost said washing machine. This is apparently a washing machine. You wash your food in here. 
Uh, but yeah, that's that's I guess it for the major changes in this version. Let's see. I'm gonna keep going through these and then really get into where things start getting radically different because there was a point where things got radically different because of a little intervention by another uh, TF2 community member, but I'll bring that up when we get to that version. So uh, we're just gonna go to the next one. Okay, so I just skipped over version eight of the map. It didn't really have anything different in it worth talking about. Uh, but this one looks to be fairly different. Looks like this is B. This is B1, beta one. It's got different lighting. Try to go a little more in with the detailing. This is still just squares and shit. But I tried to do actually some sculpting here. I never really gotten to a point in any of my maps development until this map where I felt like I could comfortably actually transition into doing like more detailing stuff and less, you know, uh, layout stuff and gameplay stuff. And since I had never really done it before, a lot of it is pretty amateurish. And to this day, I still have not really gotten to that point in my mapping abilities of being able to fully detail and complete a map. It's very unfortunate. But, this is one of the closest I've gotten to that point, and it was my first, you know, first taste of having to try to do that. This looks a little different. The lighting is different, obviously. You got this thing is different. It's a completely different upper area. Instead of having a building that's just blocking the sightline here, it's just a thing that you can sit on. Just a little more gameplay space, I guess. This looks ugly as fuck. Uh, let's see what else is different. Go up here. These windows. I don't remember when these windows became... I think when I changed the textures over to not dev textures, these windows became square and not shit. Uh, was this wall always here in this wooden thing? I can't remember. Yeah, so... Oh, dog is barking. This is a little different. We got this, like, glass thing here. Very weirdly designed building on blue side. I think it was originally going to be like a greenhouse thing? I'm not sure. Also, uh, this is where the cactus, the gentleman cactus right here, the easter egg, got moved to. Also, this job has worked zero days without an accident, just letting y'all know. Um, what actually changed in here besides attempting detailing stuff? Got this. Go up here. Uh, I guess across that other version, I added these like computers here. There's a computer here. There's this computer here that I guess is a, supposed to provide more explanation to why capturing the point would let you launch the rocket. Also, this sign here. If you'll it, just give me one second. All right, let me double check. All right, I have unpaused. Hopefully. Come on now. Alright. So, I think that's it for this version. I don't know what else to say about this one, other than this was the first beta version. But this would not be the last of the big layout changes. Like I mentioned, there was a uh, an intervention. Let me just check the console real quick to see at what point it actually changed significantly. Let's see what B2 is real quick before that. Alright, so it looks like B2 is more... probably just more detailing stuff. It looks like I just abandoned the red is in a cave thing entirely and just made it a brick building, which, gotta say, definitely looks nicer than the cave. The cave looked really ugly. <laughs> and there's still a sign, there's still a billboard up there. This is still pretty... Ah, I see. This is another thing. I don't remember... I, I already forgot what version. I think it was actually last version. But this is when I started dabbling and actually using lights from the lighting prefab library. So we got things like light bulbs and these little side wall lamps and these ceiling lamps here. And... Any, any gameplay changes at all? Or any oh here we go this is this is the big gameplay change of this version right here 
This is a one-way door. On a Koth map. What madman would put... Oh, this is different, too. I already forgot what version I did this in. Oh, no, wait. This is also pretty significant. So the mid-building actually did get significant changes, even though it's beta. You have... You now have all-class roof access over here, and better entryways in here. And... You have a fucking one-way door that takes you out to the balcony. Instead of this being two-way, it's now one-way. Because I believe what I found to happen over and over again in the previ all the previous versions of the map was that the enemy team really liked to use the, the, like, the opposite team's version of this room. And I really wanted this room to be a good staging area for the team that was on that side of the map to use to storm into here is like one of the key areas to do that to get the high ground besides well this one now so I thought that the easiest way to do well not the easiest but the most elegant in my opinion way to do that was to just make it so that the enemy team had a really hard time of entering the upper story of this room from this side and so there's a one way here, and that has stayed in the map ever since, I believe. I don't think I don't think it's been removed. I can double check, of course. But that other than that and this, I believe those are the two major changes for this version. It's the next version, I believe, where things really change, because it was that version that I was approached. Well, at some point, I believe it was actually, yeah, it was this year. It was around January of this year. It was either January of this year or December last year. Uh, a man by the name of Lucrative, who is a old, old school TF2 competitive player, found some of my maps on TF.TV. I, I'll show some of those other ones. A little later. I think I might have, I may have already showed them in videos. Maybe? I don't know. I don't think so. I think they all came after. <coughs> they all came after all the other videos in the mapping projects list. Yeah. And any any maps that I put on TF.TV, I'm pretty sure all came after the mapping projects videos besides this one and the ones that will be to come. Uh, but yeah, I was encountered by him, he had found, there. I believe there were five CPs. I think it was just one, actually. And I showed him some stuff, and I think, I don't remember how exactly it led to me showing him this map, but he ended up taking a look at this map, and he, he seemed to like it. He saw potential in it. He gave me some pointers on some big things to do with it, and so we're going to see what I did with it in the next version. Let's get them. All right, so this is Koth underscore ordinance underscore B2 CV2. I believe the CV was supposed to mean competitive version. Uh, I just skipped over, I skipped over B2 CV because I didn't really notice a whole lot of differences between uh, that one and this one, but this is where some pretty major gameplay stuff actually did happen based on a lot of feedback that Lucrative gave. This version might have changed also because of... I think... I can't remember... Actually, you know, no, I think I know what it was. I think it was CV was never played. I think it was just Lucrative ran around it, and then he sugge suggested some more stuff, and then CV2, B2, CV2 was the one that actually got tested. But this version was the first version that Lucrative got tested a couple times. Actually, I think he got this one tested once, and then it was got updated afterwards to another version. Uh, this version was tested competitively in his... Uh, he ran some, some pugs, pick up games. I don't know why I'm moving around the same spot multiple times. He ran some pick up games where he would test people's custom maps. And this map was one of them. One of the first uh, that he tested in these pugs, I believe. Uh, there's a lot of major stuff. For one, you can't really jump over the roof from this side anymore. I think 
For some reason, I left in this particular part that would let you do it. Or maybe I didn't. Hold up. Can you jump over this? Yes, you can. Okay, that was that was quickly resolved in the version after, I believe. Uh, but yeah. For the most part, you can't really jump over the roof now. The only way you can get to the roof as any class, well, as as all classes, the only all class way you can get to this roof is by the tower now. Begs the question, why didn't we just why didn't we just get rid of the roof entirely? Well, it seemed to be well, according to his logic at least, the logic that I agreed with was that this was a good like alternative route to take just in case this lower area was being controlled a lot by the enemy team and these are these are sixes pugs six v six so you have to consider that gameplay and that kind of cough gameplay but yeah that good that's that's why the roof is there but yeah that's the major change there uh packs are reduced significantly uh, there's no death pit anymore. It's just blocked up with fence and it's closed over here. There's no full packs anymore. They're all any packs that were full are now medium and some packs are just removed entirely. Uh, let's see what else changed. This one way gate surprisingly stayed in. Uh, not only did he seem to like that idea, but others seemed to be all right with it. It seemed to play pretty all right. Oh. Did not mean to call for medic. <laughs> um Let's see what else. There's this cover container that's just added here to block sight lines onto the point from this, I guess, and also just kind of break up. Yeah, because it was originally some f fences. It was originally the, those team colored fences, but now it's this, this crate. What else might have changed? There's no rock in the courtyard anymore, it looks like. I think you can still get up on this for some reason. Don't know why that's even still there. I don't know if it's there in the most recent version. There's this, like, block here? Oh, no, wait, that's been there. That lets you skill jump up to the roof from the rocks. That might have been added later. I don't know. But... Doc, come on, man. I keep accidentally calling for medic when I'm trying to fly. Uh, but, yeah, those are the pretty big gameplay changes. This is the first version of the map that was tested competitively, and the people that played it surprisingly seemed to like it. I was very surprised. It's a mirrored cough map in sixes with a one-way gate in it. You'd think people on, in that environment wouldn't like it, but they did. And I was pleased, and so I kept going a little bit. Let's see what the next uh, see what the next version is. All right, so this is now Koth Ordinance B3. This is this is about the point when the map went full. I'm going to focus this on competitive testing mode. All the stuff before that, all the stuff before the competitive versions, anyway. It's all for casual testing. This is now competitive testing. Uh, now you completely cannot get over the roof. It's impossible now. Uh, what else was different? Uh, we added added these shutters here. Actually, these might have been in the the previous version as well. I don't remember, but you have these shutters here on the on this side of the house to kind of it kind of it conceals people that are coming through here, but it also makes it easier to trap it, and it also blocks sight lines. And this area is more open. I don't think there's no rock there anymore. Um, I think it might have. It was either this version or the previous version. The vent, this vent here, got completely rerouted instead of it going into this building. So now the only ways to get into this side of the map, well, the, this this room is from up here, 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 or if you're lucky, somehow being able to go through the door here. So if you're on defenders, the only real option you have to get up to get into this building. The only viable option is you either have to go outside and take one of those routes, or you have to go through this doorway. So it just kind of makes this a more solid holding point for the team that owns this side of the map. But also the vent being rerouted here makes it easier to get up to the high ground. Because originally, the only real way you could get up to the high ground in the first, well, yeah, obviously in the first version of the map, the only way all classes could get up to the high ground was via this room, and then it became you could use that room or this this thing over here. 
but there needed to be another way up to here from the opposite side of the map, so we got the vent. You can use the vent, and it also, by rerouting the vent, it doesn't let you just super easily flood into this room from the wrong team. Uh, this got raised up a bit to block sight lines better and to make it easier to jump up if you're like a scout or something. Oh yeah, this was no longer a death pit. I forgot about that. That's been like that, though, since the first competitive version. I forgot to bring that up. Um, that looks to be everything. Uh, let's see. Let's let's see how much far this goes. All right. I just I skipped a couple versions because I didn't notice a whole lot of very noticeable changes. But this is the most recent version of the map. Now this is B five A. Uh, I think the major things I did, a lot of the things, a lot of the changes that I made, especially after those really big layout changes when Lucrative first encountered me, or I guess when I first encountered him, either either way, when we first met and when he first gave critiques about this map, uh, a lot of the gameplay, a lot of the changes were like really subtle quality of life things for competitive players, like, well I guess in this version, there's like little cracks and weird clippings and stuff that are just hidden like these stair these weird curved stairs just got turned into a ramp because the clipping was weird and bumpy on them uh, I think this ramp I don't remember what version this was changed but the ramp gets pulled almost all the way into the tube so that there's no places for projectiles to get just lost and not deal any splash uh, what else these like do weird door and window things. I don't. I think it, it was either this version or the previous one or the one before that, where this door, this was just made a big door and the small ones on the side are just gone, and instead of these being windows, it's just a door, and just a bunch of other like in one of those other versions, this tube gets added so that you can just walk out of the window instead of having to jump through them, but just like little quality of life things like that. And this is yeah, this is this is the version. That's as far as it's gotten. Uh, the big thing about it was either this version or B4 was played in a cup. It was a European Sixes custom map cup featuring this map. It was I think it was this map. Koth synthetic by. Uh, God, what's the guy's name? Some something some guy who had the word pie in his name he made a map called Koth Synthetic. It's a pretty nice looking map. It was another Koth map. It was this map, it was that map, and then I think it was I th I want to say it was one of the more recent versions of Log Jam, which was made by Heiss. And that's a 5 CP. But yeah, it was those three maps. It was a European Cup. They played this map. Uh it went differently than the and lucrative's tests that consisted mostly of American players, for sure. Uh, they didn't. They seemed to have some qualms with it that were very different from uh, the audience that was mainly playing this map. And I think that just comes down to how your. I think it was. I think it was a. The people that played in the custom map cup are not the highest competitive level, while the people that were testing this map were like kind of pretty high level competitive players including lucrative himself and also just american players and european players just play differently i don't know how differently i don't really know all the nuances behind it i don't really know the history i'm just the guy that makes maps and occasionally does competitive stuff myself but yeah that version was played in a competitive map cup, not just in the playtest, but a cup. And people, they didn't hate it, but they didn't seem to like it. The Europeans did not seem to like it. The Americans seem to like it, but the Europeans do not. I don't know exactly where this map would head after that, what audience this map should appeal to, if I should keep working on it, especially with how many things have come after it and how much I've 
I don't know, I don't want to say how much I've evolved as a mapper, because I feel like I might not have actually evolved that much, as you might be able to see in the later projects that will show off, if I even show them off. But, this map, I'd say, is a pretty big transition between the older mapping projects that I've made, all the ones in all the previous mapping projects videos, and the stuff that I've worked on more recently, and what I'm working on today, and what you're seeing in this video. So, uh, this is just kind of a spur of the moment thing. I think I was looking, I think I was just looking through my YouTube analytics for some reason. I don't normally do that because I don't like monetize my videos or anything. I don't really make money off of my channel or anything. But I was looking through it and noticed the popularity of the playlist of the Mapping Projects videos and the fact that of all the videos that I've ever made, those videos get revisited by people more, well not revisited, but they get visited by just random people more often than any of my other videos. It's very interesting. So I figured that I would make another one, and perhaps more, up to and catch up with my all my other projects, and maybe even some stuff that I haven't even put on TF2 maps or anything. Because there definitely are some stuff. There definitely are some maps, some complete maps even, that have been played by people, tested casually, competitively, or whatever, that were, have never seen the light of day on TF2 maps. But those are for other videos. This map, this video is dedicated to ordnance. And if y'all want to see me cover my other mapping projects, please let me know. Uh, yeah. So, that's pretty much it for this map. If anyone has questions about this map or anything else they want to see, uh, just let me know. Goodbye. See ya.